Hey everybody, it's Emily at Arg Schooling, and today I'm coming here to share some exciting Build Your Library news. We have a new product that I cannot wait to tell you about. So I have long been trying to figure out what to do when I read a book that I really want to use for Build Your Library unit study or a full year level or something, but it doesn't fit. So I finally decided, what if I make a small unit study called a Lit Bite that focuses just on one book instead of like a full array of titles. You just, it's composed of just the one book and it includes basically what you would get in a full year level with the literature. You get the notes and vocabulary, and the discussion questions, but also some activities to round out the story and like dig dig in deeper. So that is what I'm presenting to you today. I'm very excited about our Lit Bites. Currently we have three. I have one more in progress, but we have three for sale right now. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about each one. So first is a book that you've probably is familiar to everybody, and that's A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Lengel. This used to be in level 7, but when I did the update I moved it because I felt like it didn't really need to be there and I had a different book that I really wanted to include instead. So I pulled this out and this this was the impetus actually for me to start the Lit Bites because I was like really conflicted about removing it because I love this book and I was like well I want to do something and I decided, what if I just make these lit bites? So, thank you, A Wrinkle in Time, for spurring this whole project on. <laughs> if you're not familiar with the story, this is a classic work of science fiction for children about um, some children going to rescue their father who's been imprisoned in a different planet in space by this growing evil that is sort of slowly taking over the universe. This is the first book in the series, but I have I can honestly tell you that I've read, I think, three of the four. There might be five, but I'm pretty sure there's four. And I don't love the rest of the series. This book, I think, should have just been a standalone because it's spectacular. I love it so much, and I feel like Every child should read it at some point. You probably, if you follow me on social media at all, you probably saw me ve being very upset about Mouse, the Mouse series being banned in a school, I think in Tennessee, and it spurred on this entire thing, like it took over the internet. And I was like, well, clearly this is my moment. I need to write a, a unit study for Mouse. And then I was like, well, what if I make it a lip bite? So that is what I did. I have the Mouse series, which is two books, or you can buy, I think it's a, called The Complete Mouse. I don't own that, but it's just the two books bound up in one volume. And this is a graphic novel about, um, about the Holocaust. This is Art Spiegelman, like it's very meta, it's him in the story, he's interviewing his father about his time during the war and what he experienced living in Poland as a Jew during World War II. And so it like starts just before the war begins and it follows him up through through the end of the war and of course like in, in the time period he's writing it and like interviewing his father. So I love this series specifically because one, it's very meta, and I find that fascinating. I love stories within a story, so you're getting, like, Art interviewing his father and actively writing the book and, like, talking about his process of writing the book and, like, what he's dealing with, trying to figure out how to make this into a cohesive story. But you're also following his father, Vladek, as he's surviving the war. And you can see, like, how, how their relationship was affected by the war, and you can see how the war has affected him and his life and his mother and and it just i find it very important when talking about the holocaust that we don't make it into a story about the good guys and the bad guys and we don't make it into a story about like how the jews lived happily ever after when they survived because i see that in books sometimes and it really it really bothers me because i think one 
there was no happy ending here. Like, those who survived were affected by it for the rest of their lives. Some of them never really left the camps. And it, it just... I think it's important to show that there's no heroes. Those that did survive, they, they didn't survive because they were better or because they were stronger or any of that. They survived because they survived. And what happened after was different for everybody. And so that's why I think this is an important series because it paints a very honest picture. It does not, he does not glorify his father whatsoever. And you can definitely see their relationship was very troubled. And you can see why, like how the war played a part in that. I just, I think this, this series is very important and I think it should be required reading. And so I wrote a lip bite for it, and this is definitely high school level, where where a wrinkle in time I feel can be flexible age-wise. Like it really depends on your child and how long they can sit and listen to a story and like what their comprehension is like. So this one's very middle grade level with varying ages. Whereas this is a solid high school and up. I would not recommend this for anyone younger than say 14. Then finally, the last lip bite I have available right now is Ophie's Ghost by Justina Ireland. I read this at the beginning of the year and absolutely loved it. This is probably one of my favorite middle grade books that I've read this year. And I think it's also one of those stories that, that would appeal to a pretty wide audience. I recommend this for like ages 10 and up just because there are some moments in the story that can be kind of upsetting and, and somewhat disturbing, but not on the level of Mouse, more on like a children's spooky story. This is a book about a girl who lives in Georgia with her mother and her father, but her father is killed at the very beginning of the story. That's not really a spoiler. And <laughs> just making that clear, it's not spoilery, but her father dies and they have to leave and move up north. So it's sort of a great migration tale because there's some talk at the beginning of like why so many African Americans were moving up to the north in this time period of the 1920s. And so they move up north, they get a job at this big house called Daffodil Manor and the only people living there is an elderly woman and her adult son. And it's also inhabited by ghosts because, oh yes, Ophi has this ability to see and speak with ghosts. And throughout the story, you kind of learn more about why she has this ability and what she can do with it. But it's also kind of a mystery story because she's unraveling this weird story. She's unraveling this mystery at Daffodil Manor and trying to figure out who this ghost is and why they are there and what happened to them. And it's just a really cool story. Like, I love Ophi as a heroine. I feel she's a very realistic, realistically portrayed child dealing with something like this. I think the writing was beautiful. And I just thought the whole story was just so well done and so well crafted. So this lit bite is about three weeks in length and it is perfect for your 10 to 12 year old. Although, again, it depends on the child. I, I, I always say age is flexible for most of our products because you can definitely use with older and younger. Just, you know, use your discretion. If you're not sure, I would recommend picking up the book and reading it on your own first to see if it's something that would work for your child. So our Lip Bites are available right now. We have these three Ophie's Ghost, Mouse, Duology, and A Wrinkle in Time. Um, I'm going to be doing, like, I'm going to aim for one a month, but that's probably getting carried away. I don't know if that's plausible while I'm doing other projects, but ideally I would do one a month and I'm going to try to have a good range of like age levels. So right now I have two middle grade level ones and a high school level one. I'm hoping to write some for younger elementary and some more high school but I have a ton of great middle grade that I've been sitting on for a while and I'm very excited to have something to do with it all finally. So I look forward to lots of new lip bites coming your way in the near future. So I hope you check them out. I'm going to leave a link down below in the description where you can see our lip bite offerings and learn about them. And I hope you'll pick some up. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Happy reading. Bye.